Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I want to talk about this beautiful Longines 1945 from their Heritage line. The Heritage line is a very good seller for this uh, Swatch Group brand. It's probably their best seller and the 1945 does very well. Now it came out a couple years ago and it's enjoyed nice popularity. The retail price is $1,800. It sells gray market for right around $1,200 to $1,300. And on the secondary market, you can find some really good deals at 1,000 and in many instances, less than 1,000. And at that price point, what Longines has brought to the table really creates that great value proposition that as a watch fan, as a crazy watch idiot savant, I find attractive and I get excited about. So let's talk about the highlights here. Let's go in on a macro level and see the star of the show, which is this beautiful vertically brushed copper tone domed dial. It's very clean. And when you're looking at a watch at this level of magnification, a lot of times you see dust, you see, uh, sometimes you see fibers. <laughs> That's never fun to see. Uh, you can see rough finishing or rough edges, but you don't see any of that when you look at this one at this level of magnification. Everything is sharp and clean and well-defined, and there's a good balance to the overall look of the watch. It's very linear, it's very symmetrical, and I think it's very strong. Now let's look at this uh, from north to south. We'll start with the 12 o'clock marker. You can see everything that is even is done in this nice, clean Arabic font. There's an open six down at the six o'clock position. There's a small amount of depth to the printing and a very small amount of light play. So it looks very sharp. And notice everything that's odd is not done in Arabics. It is done in a half sphere application, polished and set into this dial. So I think it's very balanced. I like seeing that. If we come down a little bit, you can see the simple Longines printing come down to the center of the watch and you see the handset. Now, I love this handset for a few reasons. One, for the length, these leaf shapes, uh, they look really good because the watch as a whole is a dial dominant look as you're looking at the face of the watch. So seeing the long hour hand, seeing the even longer minute hand is a nice thing. But the best part is it's thermally tempered. And again, at $1,000 or so, you don't normally see that from a brand in Switzerland. So I love seeing the thermal, thermally tempered hands, how you get that range of color from, in certain lights, black to navy to the more vivid blues, uh, just how it changes with the light. It's very, very well done. Now below the hand stack, you guys can see the sunken sub-seconds register. The needle hand here is also thermally tempered. It looks beautiful. We have concentric circle, guilloche texturing. And then if you look at the indexing, Again, everything that's even is printed in this clean font. Everything that's odd is not done in Arabic. So it's just linear. So it kind of ties in with, uh, with the overall dial. There's some good balance. Again, good symmetry here. If we go below the, the sub-second register, you can see the automatic font. Very simple, the slight amount of curve to it. And then you have your open six. And then below that, where that dome of the dial kind of terminates down, you can see the Swiss made designation. Now zooming back out and taking a look at this at the whole, you guys can see that cleanliness, that sharpness, the balance that I really like. So some guys say the sub seconds is too small. There's too much uh, void. There's too much space on the dial. I don't see that at all. I love the vertical brushing. I love the copper tone. I love how the dial just has that slight dome. It's not huge like you'd find, it's not very dramatic like you'd find on my Captain Cook that I'm wearing today, another Swatch brand. A review is coming on this. It's a lot more subtle, and I appreciate that. It's set off under a dramatically double-domed sapphire crystal with inner anti-reflective treatment and a chamfered edge where it meets this flat polished bezel. The polished bezel is awesome because it's slightly sunk into the case Again, it's an all polished case and uh, you can see a little bit of how it cuts into these nicely curved lugs and how they arc down and kind of hug the natural curvature of your wrist. So the overall look is just beautiful. You get a lot of light play, especially in natural light. And you guys can see it just looks really sharp on my 7.25 inch wrists. So I've gushed about this. I really like it. I think it's great for the price, but what would be negative aspects? 
For me, there's just one large missed opportunity, and that is the fact that Longines is not proudly showing off the modified ETA caliber that's, uh, that's within this case. Now Longines, they're very traditional when it comes to decorating or finishing their movements. So you'll see traditional Geneva striping and engine turn micro perlage work. It's lovely seeing uh, the gold tone of the balance mixed with the silver tone of the plates uh, contrasting with the red of the synthetic rubies. So it's very handsome, very tasteful, but you can't see it uh, because again, this is just a simple, polished, rather sterile case back that is a snap-on case back. So I think there's a missed opportunity on the part of the swatch group to kind of show off what they're giving you at this price point that would help the value proposition with watch guys like us. Now I can hear some of you, I, I recognize that the original watch from the 1940s, you know, that World War II era would not have had an exhibition case back. It would not have had an automatic movement like what's in this modern interpretation. It would have had a very sterile case back and uh, behind which would be a fully mechanical hand winding movement. So I kind of get what Longine is doing here, but when you're spending a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars, you want to see the movement in many instances. For this reason, a lot of guys when they get into watches, you know, they're, they're buying two hundred, four hundred dollar watches, five hundred in most instances, and the first time they really double what they put down into a watch and they get into the uh, you know, the four figure range. It's for a thousand dollar watch or a two thousand dollar watch. And so in many instances, your first real nice Swiss watch could be a watch like this 1945. And in that, you know, that regard, you want to see the movement, you want to see the decoration. Uh, you want to be able to see the balance beating away in there, oscillating. I think that would be a great thing. So missed opportunity on the part of Longines, though I do understand why they didn't show off the case back. They're trying to stay true to the vintage design DNA. Now, as I close you out here, I'm gonna give you some more wrist shots. I do like this honey distressed leather strap. I think it works with the dial very well. My favorite thing though is putting this on a German made polished Milanese mesh. It looks beautiful. The all silver tone helps the blue, the thermally tempered blue hands kind of pop off that copper tone dial. I think, it look, I think it just looks beautiful. So anyways, guys, keep your eyes out for the Longines Heritage 1945 at a good price. I think it's a worthy addition to really just about any collection. I think it's a compelling package. And if you're buying it at the right price, you're really getting a lot for your money. And we want that as watch fans. So that being said, I will be selling mine to, to turn it into new content to feature here on the channel. If you're interested in picking up my own, that I bought from an authorized dealer, uh, please reach out to me. I'll put my email address in the description. Uh, so for those that are interested, that is available. But thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any specific questions and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.